Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for more computer organization. Uh, so today what we're going to be focused on is the fetch, execute, and decode cycle. And just a little bit of information about the von Neumann models and non-von Neumann models. And we will introduce just a couple more registers that we will see later in the course. But it, I think it's very beneficial to see it right now. So uh, we're going over the von Neumann model. I just wanted to bring it up one more time. So as you can see, this is the CPU. We have our registers here, our ALU, which is has to do with arithmetic, uh, such as subtraction, uh, addition, multiplication, division, and our logic, as well like and, and, nor, uh, stuff like that. We have our control unit, which is pretty much the central nervous system of the CPU, it really controls uh, the instructions or when to do certain instructions of the CPU. So that's why it's called a control unit. It controls what, uh, what kind of acts the CPU is allowed to do. And we have our main memory. And this is uh, can be RAM or ROM. So this is the, mer uh, the memory that we are actively using. And our input output system can be any type of input or output that, that we want. So uh, this is the general depiction of the von Neumann system. And the they employ a fetch decode execute cycle that we will about uh, will will learn right now. So the bad thing about the von Neumann uh, model, it has a bottleneck. As you can see here, there is only one single path from the CPU to main memory. That is that can be very detrimental to the speed of the CPU of the speed of a computer because if there's not multiple lines or multiple ways to to fetch into memory or to to have um, buses to get into uh, different sections of what the CPU needs, it's going to ca cause interrupts and it's going to cause the CPU to not run properly. So. To, for the extension of the von Neumann model, we have a system bus model. So we have three different types of buses that we are introducing. So we have the data bus, which is right here, the data bus. Of course, the data bus carries data. So this transfers data from memory of a computer or into or out to CPU registers. And then we have the address bus right here. And what this says, it's the exact same thing. It holds the address. It holds the location of the data that, that's currently being hold in the data bus. So the data bus is holding the data, and the address bus is holding the address, the memory, and loca the location of memory of that data. And then we have the control bus, and this is necessary for the control signals and how the transfer is going to take place. So this communication is vital. It's necessary to run it for this uh, for this control bus to run properly, or it's not going to run a proficient and uh, functional system. And without this, the CPU cannot determine whether the system is receiving or sending data. So this is very important. All these buses are very important. And as you can see, it's uh, all spread out. You, there's a uh, multiple ins and outs to, to get into memory, input, output, CPU. But over here, we only have this one, this one path right here. So that's why this is an extension of the von Neumann model. So we're gonna look at the fetch execute cycle. So before before we look at the four operations, this is pretty much caused by the control unit. It controls uh, all parts of the computer system and it manages these four basic operations. If you remember what I said, the control unit is the central nervous system of the CPU. So what is the fetch execute decode cycle, which I've been saying for like the past five minutes and video beforehand. So what it is, essentially, we're just going to get a, a um, instructions from a computer memory. So fetch, we get the, the next program command from the computer's memory. We are going to decode that. Uh, we, we want it to be deciphered and know what the program is telling the computer to do. Once we decipher that data, we want to execute. We want the computer to execute on those instructions and we will store the saved results 
in a register or in memory. So fetch, it gets the next program command. Decode, we decipher what those instructions are. Then we have execute, we will execute on those instructions and then we store that data. So before we start all that, I wanna introduce the program counter. It's um, a register in the CPU. It's very important, it holds pretty much the next instruction that we need. So the program counter, like I said, is a register in the CPU and it con contains the address. Address can pretty much the same thing as location of the instruction that's being executed at the current time. So it's a special purpose register that's used by the processors to hold the address of the next instruction. And as each instruction gets fetched, the program counter increases uh, its stored value by one. So when the computer is starting, it's at value zero and it continues, continues until the computer is finally turned off. And as the last one, each, as each, each instruction is fetched, the program counter points to the next instruction in the sequence. So, but how does it work? If you're asking, uh, I told you what the program counter, uh, how, what is the program counter, but how does it actually work? So all these instructions, as well as data in memory have specific addresses. The, the instructions that this program count, program counter is fetching it's they have specific addresses so as these instructions are processed the piece the program counter is updated with the upcoming instructions address which needs to be fetched so the program counter always points to the next instruction it's not holding the current instruction What's holding the current instruction, as we will see in a little bit, is the instruction register, the I, the IR register or the CIR register, if you want to call it current, current instruction register. Program counter always points to the next set of instructions. So the program counter in turn passes this information, the, the address of the instructions to the MAR register as a part of the ex execution cycle standard fetch. So what is the MAR? The MAR is the memory address register. Just like its name says, it has the address in memory. So it's holding the contents. It's, it's, it's like pointing, pointing to the address in memory where the contents of the instructions are. So it pretty much says holds the memory location of data that needs to be accessed, but it doesn't actually hold the data. If you guys, have any have ever worked in C uh, it's pretty much like a pointer it's pointing to the memory but it's to to the location in memory but it's not actually holding the information so uh, the program counter increases as a stored value uh, by one as the next in instruction is fetched so after the end the program counter increases one the fetch execute cycle the computer retrieves a program instruction from its memory. So what the fetch ex uh, decode execute cycle is, we pretty much try to uh, look for the instruction in memory. We try to decipher that decode by decoding it uh, in, the, in the decode cycle, and we wanna execute it and store it. So this cycle of fetching, decoding, and executing an, inst an instruction is continually repeated by the CPU while the computer is on, just like I said before. So this is what it looks like. It fetches instruction from memory. And then the next step is to decode that instruction. We want to evaluate the address in memory. We want to fetch the proper operands from memory to decipher and to um, allow us to continue this cycle. We will execute this operation, whatever it is, whatever we decode it to be. And then we will store the data that we retrieved or the memory or whatever we, we need to store. The first step is to fetch. So as you can see, we have the program counter. We have our registers here that are unnamed. We have our ALU and our control unit. So the control unit fetches the next instruction from memory 
using this program counter because this is holding the next instruction. So this allows uh, the control unit to determine where the instruction is located. The next part of the fetch, ex uh, fetch decode execute cycle, of course, is the decode, the decode uh, section. And this is decoding the instruction or deciphering it into a language, into machine language that the ALU can actually understand and implement its arithmetic or logic that it needs to do. What is also necessary is to fetch the, the necessary operands at, during, during the decode uh, cycle. So it evaluates the address and it fetches those operands from memory. So any data apparent required to execute the instructions are fetched from memory and placed in the registers. Uh, these operands are not necessary to know. Uh, we are just just pretty much scraping over the, the fetch execute decode cycle or the fetch decode execute cycle. And the last step, uh, which can be seen as two steps, is uh, executing and storing that variable. So the ALU executes the instruction and places the results in the registers or memory. So these are two registers that I just want to bring up. It's the MBR, which is the memory buff register. This interacts with the MAR register. And like I said earlier, the MAR register, the memory address register, this holds the memory location of the data that needs to be accessed. This is pointing to the location of where the instruction that we need. It doesn't actually hold the data. So this holds, the MBR actually holds the contents found at the address held by MAR. So what it does, it goes into MAR, figures out what's that address and goes to that address and holds that data. And it uses that data to be transferred to primary memory. And what's the second register? The second register is the instruction register, and the function of this register is to hold the instructions that are currently being executed. Like I said before, the program counter holds the instructions that are for the next, or it's holding the next instructions, while the IR is holding the current instructions. So this is a very, very simplified version. We, I already brought up all of these registers. You don't necessarily need to know this for chapter one, but you will see it in around chapter six, chapter five. And I think it's very, actually very important to see, to uh, or chapter three. I think it's very, very important to see this before because you just don't want to go blind into the other chapters when we finally uh, see like virtual memory or... Um, other similar topics like that. So what's happening? The program counter contains the address of the next instruction. So that address that's in the PC is copied to the memory address register, the MAR. It's holding the the address for the holding the address in memory. It's not holding the actual content, but it goes it, it's uh, it points to a location in memory. And the contents or the address contained in the MAR are copied into MBR and the, uh, the MBR contents uh, are copied into the instruction register. So what's happening is a uh, MAR, it's actually MMR, um, whatever that location is being pointed to, the, MAR, the MBR is finally being able to to grab those those contents and place them in the instruction register. So this is kind of like a pointer type of look. Um, if you guys haven't done C or any pointers in any programming classes, don't worry about it. We will look at it in another chapter. Like I said, I just want you guys to see this. This is this wasn't even in um, these chapters. I wanted to add more content and more of a deeper look at what's happening. And then what's happening is that the PC is incremented by one because why is it incremented by one? Because the PC always needs to hold the next instruction. So if the IR is holding the current instruction, if it gets here and starts to hold the current instruction, the PC now needs to 
hold the, the next instruction. So what happens after? The instruction is decoded, then executed, and this just repeats and repeats and repeats. So moving to the last section of this, uh, this um, PowerPoint, this section, it's the non-von uh, non Neumann models. Remember, this is the von Neumann model right over here. This is what it looks like. We have our CPU, we have our main memory, and we have our input-output system. All right. So improvements to the this conventional like stored program computers, we added specialized buses, floating point units, and cache memories to increase our performance in computers because having just one CPU with one one bus going into main memory and one bus going into input output systems it's just not a very specialized or efficient way to have a computer so these improvements in the computational power it needed to departure from the classic von neumann architecture because if we wanted to increase our power increase our capabilities in our computers we cannot just have one one uh one way that's why we call it the von neumann bo bottleneck because there's only one way if an interrupt occurs it slows down the processing power of our computer so what we did is we have a uh, parallel processing so this pretty much w means we have uh, we can either work with multiple separate computers or we can have multiple processors in our in our computers or multiple cores integrated onto the same chip so we cooperated with the von Neumann, von Neumann machines uh, and we created parallel processing computers, but no longer is the von Neumann model efficient or even used. We just have departed from that type of architecture, but it was pretty much the, the standard computer model for the longest time and it's no longer looked as that way. So this is the end of chapter one. The next video will be a homework video. It's just going to be just asking about a couple definitions and we're going to do conversions. And um, that's pretty much it for that homework video. It's going to be very straightforward. And chapter two, it's going to get a lot more difficult. It will become a lot more difficult. You guys need to be trying to take notes and try to just be able to understand what's happening in the computer, um, in the computer organization, how the computer organizes itself to work as a proper, proper device, proper machine. And we will be learning binary, hexa, hexadecimal, octo, and we will be learning how to convert into each other, binary addition, binary subtraction, uh, different uh, great stuff like that. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. There was a lot to it. It's a, It was very different. It was very different for me to teach it as well since I did add a lot of extra material that wasn't in the lecture. So I wanted to make sure it looked fluid as possible, guys. Well, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and do your studying. We will be coming back with a homework video. So make sure there will be a link in the description for the Google Doc. And I'll also be holding uh, the link in the description for the Google Doc as well um, in the next video. So thank you so much, guys.